It's December 13, 2020. I'm Todd Dunn. This video is the third video in my series on repowering a displacement hull powerboat. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about propellers and power curves. Basically, what that boils down to is how do you decide what the parameters are for your propeller when you are doing a repower. And, to illustrate that, I have been communicating with Peter Knowles of Travels with Jordy, who's in the process right now of repowering his classic 38-foot Monk powerboat. I talked Peter into sending me all of the parameters on his hull, and I used my computer program that I wrote for my last video in this series to calculate the resistance of his hull to movement through the water, which is basically the power required to move the hull through the water. And in this video, I'm going to go over the procedure to decide just how to pitch his propeller. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start off this video by talking a little bit about marine propellers. This is a standard three blade fixed blade marine propeller. In other words, the blades cannot move relative to the rest of the propeller. Now, there are a number of parameters that define a propeller. The first and perhaps the most obvious is the number of blades. This is a three blade prop. But props come in two, three, four, five, six, and even seven blade configurations. Although by far the most common on a displacement powerboat is a three blade or four blade prop. Another important parameter is the diameter of the propeller. In this picture you can see I've drawn a circle around the outside of the propeller just touching the blades. And the diameter of that circle is the diameter of the propeller. This diagram also illustrates another aspect of a propeller, and that is what's called the disk area ratio. If we were to measure the area of each of the propeller blades and sum them up, and then divide that by the area of the circle with the diameter of the propeller, that ratio would be the disk area ratio. The last propeller parameter we need to know is called pitch. If you look at these diagrams of a propeller, if the red line indicates the orientation of the propeller shaft, you'll notice that the propeller blades are at an angle to perpendicular to the shaft. And that makes the propeller behave like a screw when it rotates. And you can think of the propeller screwing through the water. And the distance that it would move in one complete rotation is called the pitch. The next question that we have to ask is what propeller are we going to use? If you're doing a repower that means that you already have a propeller. Propellers are expensive so ideally you'd like to reuse your existing propeller if you can. Now you can't change the diameter or the blade count or the disk area ratio of a propeller but you can change the pitch. In other words, you can cause the blades to be rotated a bit more to increase the pitch or a bit less to decrease it. The rule of thumb is that you can usually go plus or minus about two inches in pitch if you're using English or about 10 centimeters in pitch in metric. More than that, and you have to worry about weakening the blades due to the uh, bending that's required to repitch a propeller. Now it's very important to know what pitch you want for your propeller. Repitching a prop is probably going to cost in the $250 to $400 range depending on the size of the prop and the blade count. So you don't want to have to do it more than once and 
realistically, while it's possible to remove a propeller in the water, it's a lot easier when a boat's out of the water. So ideally, you'd like to do it uh, while you're doing a haul out and not have to do it, and then haul the boat out again and repitch. So what we're going to be doing today is talking about how to determine the required pitch. The first step in determining the necessary pitch for your propeller is to find out something about the new engine you're putting in. All marine diesel engines come with a diagram that looks something like this. This is called an engine power diagram and they usually have two curves. The upper curve here is the maximum engine power in horsepower in this case as a function of engine RPMs. And the upper limit of that curve is maximum rated RPMs for the engine. Now diesel engines uh, can produce power anywhere from essentially zero at any given uh, engine speed up to the maximum engine power depending on how much fuel you meter into the engine via the fuel injectors. Now this lower curve on a typical engine diagram is a model or hypothetical propeller power curve. This is the curve for the amount of power required to turn the propeller at the different rotational or RPM rates. And this is the sort of typical form for a propeller power curve. And what you ideally, what you'd like is for the propeller power curve to intersect the engine power curve at maximum rated engine RPMs. So what we need to do is figure out how to go from this hypothetical propeller power curve to a real curve for a specific propeller with a known diameter, blade count, disc area ratio, and pitch. So let's get started on that. In this presentation, I'm going to be talking about a numerical method to determine the required pitch for a propeller. In this case, we're going to be dealing with uh, single engine boats, single engine, single propeller. And we're, the numerical method I'm using is based on studies of propellers and their thrust versus RPMs, blade count, pitch, and disc area ratio done at a university in the Netherlands called the Wageningen University. And those studies have been used to produce numerical models by the Naval Architecture Group at the University of Michigan, and those models are presented in this paper for Wageningen B-series propellers, and those are fixed blade propellers. And uh, so that's the approach we're going to take. I've given a link to where you can get this paper if you want to read it in the description for this video. The University of Michigan took the Wageningen B-series propeller data and fit two equations to that data. One equation is for the thrust coefficient, which is K sub T, which is defined as the thrust produced by the propeller, divided by the density of seawater times the square of the rotation rate of the propeller times the diameter of the propeller to the fourth power. And the other equation they derived was for the torque coefficient, K sub Q, which is defined as the torque of the propeller divided by seawater density, rotation rate of the propeller squared, times the diameter of the propeller to the fifth power. So these are the equations we're going to look at to calculate these two coefficients. The equations for the thrust and torque coefficients, kt and kq, are both written as functions of four variables. Uh, 
Those variables are j, which is called the advance coefficient, and it's equal to the speed of advance of the propeller, va, divided by the product of the rotation speed of the propeller n and the diameter of the propeller. Now, the advance speed of the propeller is the speed that the propeller itself is moving through the water, and this is a little bit less than the boat speed, and it's because when the boat moves through the water, it drags a little water along with it. The relationship to boat speed is boat speed V times the wake fraction WF. And wake fraction is given by naval architect Dave Gare as 1.11 minus 0 0.6 times the block coefficient. Now the block coefficient is simply the volume displacement of the boat divided by the volume of a box with the dimensions waterline length, waterline beam, and draft of the canoe body, which is draft of the boat exclusive of the keel. The next variable is propeller pitch P divided by propeller diameter. The third variable is the disk area ratio of the propeller, which we talked about a little bit ago. And finally, the last variable is Z, the number of propeller blades. The actual equations for the thrust and torque coefficients, KT and KQ, both have the same form. And they are written as a sum over a constant times j raised to the power s, p over d raised to the power t, dar raised to the power u, and z raised to the power v, where c, s, t, u, and v are coefficients, and they change with each uh, element in the sum, and there are 39 sets of coefficients in the KT, or thrust coefficient equation, and 47 sets of coefficients in the KQ, or torque coefficient equation. So, the next step, we can put all these variables in, and we can easily uh, calculate KT and KQ using a simple computer program, but how do we solve for power as a function of engine RPMs? To answer that question, we need to look at the variables a little bit. We can specify a particular propeller which will set its pitch and diameter and its disk area ratio and its number of blades. So that determines P over D DAR and Z. The problem comes in the variable J. We have to set the speed of the boat in order to calculate the speed of advance of the propeller, and we also have to determine the and we also have to uh, know the speed of rotation of the propeller. The problem comes down in that for a given speed of the boat, we don't know what the appropriate speed of, ro of the rotation of the propeller is. And we need to have one other constraint in order to solve for KT or KQ. The additional constraint can be derived by looking at the definition of the thrust coefficient kt. Now in here, the only thing we don't know is the propeller thrust, but we actually do know it at any given speed because we have calculated the resistance that the boat experiences to movement as a function of boat speed in the previous video in this series. So we can go in take a value of rotation speed of the propeller, calculate KT, and then solve for thrust, compare that to the resistance for the speed we were using, and then 
adjust n, the rotation speed of the propeller, until calculated thrust is equal to the known resistance for that boat speed. And that's exactly what I did. And it's very simple, just a little computer program to do all the calculations and make the comparisons and adjust the value of n, or propeller rotation speed. We can then use that value of n to calculate the torque coefficient. And then we can calculate the propeller efficiency at that particular value of rotation speed of the propeller. And that is just given by j over 2 pi times the ratio of kt to kq. The next step is to determine engine power in watts, and that's just thrust times boat speed divided by propeller efficiency. And engine horsepower, if we don't want to stay in watts, is watts divided by 746. And this will give us, for each boat speed, a rotation speed of the propeller, which we can convert into engine RPMs, and a horsepower which we can then plot on our diagram. Using this method, we can use our known boat speed and resistance values and to calculate horsepower versus RPM curves for different propellers. What I've done here is done it for three different 24 inch diameter four blade propellers. The green curve shows a propeller with a 14 inch pitch. The red curve shows a propeller with a 16 inch pitch. And the blue curve shows a propeller with a, an 18 inch pitch. The green curve shows that we can reach full RPMs and never get to maximum horsepower rated for the engine at, at its maximum engine RPMs. This is what's called underpropped. The red curve, on the other hand, intersects the uh, engine power curve in black there exactly at maximum engine RPMs. And this would be an ideal prop. And the blue curve intersects the engine power curve at somewhat less than maximum engine RPMs about uh, 300 less in this case. So this indicates that with this 18 inch pitch prop, we could never achieve rated engine RPMs. This is what's called overpropped. And what we're looking for when we do these calculations is a propeller curve that intersects the engine power curve at maximum engine RPMs, or maybe is just slightly below the engine power curve at maximum rated engine RPMs. That allows us a little headroom if we get into adverse conditions, which will push the propeller curve up a little bit. Another thing we can do with this uh, approach is we can generate a plot of boat speed versus engine RPMs like this one. The red line here is a calculated boat speed versus engine RPMs curve for my boat, Tortuga, which I applied this method to. And the green line is a plot of measured boat speed, where I took the boat out, ran it at different engine RPMs, and logged the speed determined by GPS. And you can see it worked really well. The root mean square error in boat speed relative to measure to calculated boat speed for my boat was 0.3 knots. Now let's apply this method to a boat that is currently being repowered. That is MV Jordy, which belongs to Peter Knowles, who uh, has the YouTube page Travels with Jordy. Here are some of the parameters on his boat. Waterline length of 37 feet 4 inches, beam at the waterline of 10 feet, draft of the boat exclusive of the keel, 2 feet 3 inches, and displacement of 22,200 pounds. Now Peter supplied me this data 
from his lines drawing, and that's him looking at the lines drawing he made of his boat down below. I used that using the methods I outlined in the second video in this series to calculate the resistance uh, for Peter's boat. I did it in three parts. The bottom line in light blue is the resistance uh, for traveling through still air, the wind resistance. The green line is frictional resistance, friction between the hull and the water it's going through. And the blue line is what's called residuary resistance, which is viscous resistance and wave-making resistance. You add those three together and you get total resistance, which is the red line. Now this resistance versus boat speed is the in, one of the input parameters for our propeller calculation. So now let's look at the propeller calculation for MV Geordi. This is the propeller calculation for Peter's boat MV Geordi. Now, I used his existing propeller, which is a four blade, 24 inch diameter propeller with 16 inches of pitch to do the calculation. And if that looks familiar, it's because this is a subset of the calculations I did a couple slides ago, which was also done for MV Geordi. And this shows the propeller curve for his existing propeller. And Peter's really lucky with his new engine that he's buying, a Beta Marine 60. He gets an almost perfect fit with his existing propeller. He doesn't really need to do anything to it. If he wants to, to tune it up though, he could pitch it down to about 15.8 inches to give himself a little bit of headroom at high engine RPMs and a little reserve for rough conditions. Now, Peter wants to be able to run at six knots, and I have put boat speeds on this curve. So we can go to six knots right there, read down to engine RPMs, and we can see that at about 1730 RPMs, Peter's boat should run at about six knots. And that coincidentally corresponds to just about the maximum in the engine torque curve, which is the sweet spot. So, as I said, Peter was really lucky in that he did a very good job of choosing his engine and his transmission gear ratio. Once, once we've settled on our propeller, we can do a number of other calculations. This just illustrates one useful one, and that is we can take the specific fuel consumption data for the engine, and given the propeller curve, which is horsepower of the engine, versus engine RPMs, we can calculate the fuel consumption of the engine at different engine RPMs. And we can, I didn't label this curve in boat speeds, but six knots is right at about 1730 RPMs. And that corresponds to roughly two liters per hour of fuel consumption, which if you're in the United States, is a little bit over half a gallon an hour. So Peter should be able to cruise MV Geordi with his exist, existing 16 by 24 inch prop very comfortably at six knots on only a little over a half gallon of fuel an hour. And this also illustrates what happens if you start to try and go faster. You'll notice that if we start going up, the fuel consumption goes up. It isn't linear with uh, engine speed. It gets steeper and steeper as we go up. And it peaks out at about 10.2 liters per hour at 2700 RPMs, which is a little over seven and a half knots. So that just shows that if you want to go fast, you're going to pay for it in fuel. Well, I hope this video has been informative to you. And I hope it illustrated how uh, a non-professional could use the information that's readily available out there to work out how to size the propeller for the displacement hull powerboat during a repower. Matter of fact, I did it, so you, you should be able to, too, because I don't have any special skills. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, 
give me a thumbs up, please. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that notification bell.